You're watching AndyTube, and in this video, I'd like to show you the complete accessories kit that came with the Singer Model 338 when it was sold at the Singer store. Um, in in one way, it's not complete, and in a couple ways, it's more than complete, and, and I'll get into that. But. Uh, you're looking at the Singer Model 338 I've been doing some videos on and uh, what 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 was included with the machine that people think of accessories wasn't really listed in the accessories package because it was considered part of the machine and that would have been the multi-purpose zigzag plate, the plate that uh, can be used for a straight stitch or zigzag, the needle plate, and and that was installed on the machine so it wasn't really considered an accessory. And the multi-purpose or zigzag foot was also not considered an accessory because it came with the machine. And the last item that uh, people get a little confused about for accessories was uh, up in the uh, cam stack area, the zero cam or zigzag cam, pattern cam, this black cam right there came installed. So it was not considered part of the accessories. Also what came installed, and this was usually done at the store, uh, were two spool pins and felt pads. That was actually part of the listed accessory kit, the spool pins, um, but they installed them at the store. They just uh, tap in, they're called tap in. They're plastic, they're like a nylon plastic, and they just tap in with a hammer. Now to get to the rest of the accessory kit, um, of course like any Singer, it came with a instruction guide back in the day. This one happens to be in near perfect condition, but this is very typical of the owner's manual <laughs> or instruction guide that described everything about the machine, how to use everything, and how to sew basic seams and buttonholes and hems and make adjustments on the machine, uh, what the different attachments were for, how to use them, and always in the back they were uh, you know how to clean it and oil it and do minor adjustings, adjustments on it. And it also, uh, these particular model like the 338 that came with fashion discs uh, also had a description of them and uh, showed the patterns that you could sew with them. And the fashion discs for back in this day these were some of the first ones and they were type A and they're a flat disc or cam just a flat piece like that and the way they were cut made the different so the different patterns and the 338 came with eight um, of these fashion discs and of course the zero disc up in the machine made nine but I think they had a total of 30 or 31 so if you wanted more than these eight that came with it um, you could just order them at the store or pick them up and a lot of the stores had many of them just in stock and the cam, the, the, I call them a cam, they're really called a disc, fashion disc. Um, 
they they were put in the machine in these early models by opening the little door in this place taking out the cam or disc retention nut some called it a nut some a screw and you would just loosen that pull out the disc and you would replace it with the pattern that you wanted to sew like maybe a blind hem on a skirt something like that and then you would tighten it back up these were the precursor to the to the more better known uh, top hat cams like you've seen on the uh, 401, 403A, 500, 503A and into the 6 and 700s and those were called uh, uh, special discs where these were called fashion with the 401A they were called special because of the setting on the machine you had to put the the knobs in the SR special location to be able to put the disc in and out. Now I've scanned all these on my flatbed scanner and and put the names of the the number of the disc and the pattern that it sewed. So I'll put that in the I'll insert that in the video here for ten or twelve seconds and you can pause on it if you want and take a look at the at the cams and the different patterns. But these were the ones included uh, with every 338 that was sold. So I'll put those aside for now and I'll show you that picture. Okay, then uh, moving along with the other included accessories was the straight stitch needle plate. And that's the one instead of the, the horizontal opening there just had the small hole to do a finer, better straight stitch. Uh, especially top stitching. And along with that was the straight stitch foot so you can see it's got a, a narrow slot there where the needle goes into and that lines up with that little hole and presses close to the fabric so you get less fabric pull and stitch pull and you make a flatter uh, more beautiful stitch was the idea and these were the type with the side connectors so they just went on that little wrap around up here went on to the side of the presser foot bar and then you put your big thumb screw to hold it on now some of the other presser feet that were included with this was a slotted binder and the binder foot attaches the the same way with that wrap around and you could line up your binding material and you could feed what you were binding and the binder wrap around in there and just pull it in and sew it all at once and that's you know this type of wrap around edging like on this little placemat that's a, that's a binder edge so this, this presser foot is made to just put that on neatly and evenly. Also was included um, an adjustable zipper foot. Let's see how the best way to show you this. Let me show you the bottom. You see the indentation on the bottom here on both sides of the foot for the needle to be very close to the zipper as you showed it sewed it attached the same way with the wrap around and the thumb screw but it had a little spring loaded uh, screw back here you could loosen and you could uh, move 
the actual mm, uh, foot part back and forth. So you could adjust it to the left side of the needle for that part of the zipper and then you could put it back to the right side of the needle and the needle would just line up with that little little groove in there how can I get this and uh, so you could get nice and there you go maybe that's better nice and tight and close up to the zipper next was the hammer foot and hammer feet over the years with Singer have come in various different sizes for a small narrow hem or a larger um, I think this was about a 3 8 it's got a wrap around uh, connector to the presser bar uses the thumb screw coming in from the left but it's got a little curvature guide so you could roll over the edge of your fabric tuck it in there and start sewing and it would just do a beautiful rolled hem on the end edge of the fabric instead of you know just um, a scissor cut and maybe a, a straight little stitch line along there. This would roll the hem and stitch it to a beautiful uniform uh, beautiful uniform hem. So the hemmer foot. Um, also there was a button foot and it attaches the same way little wrap around attachment with the thumb screw and it's a very short straight and it's just so you could put your needle on your fabric where you were going to sew it and you could lower the presser foot right onto the button and you could set your zigzag width uh, to line up with your button holes and the stitch length at about zero and you just run a zigzag stitch back and forth through your buttonhole three or four times and the button foot was just to securely hold the button in place while you did that and it had a little groove out here because a lot of people uh, back then would put a needle or a straight pin uh, in there so that when they did the back and forth through the holes of the button then they could pull that out and it would give just a little space between the fabric and the back of the button so it was designed to hold it hold the button in place while you sewed it and allowed a, an indentation there to put a straight pin if you wanted to to do it uh, an adjustable seam guide this screws right into the bed of the machine and it's got like a big big thumb screw there and you adjust it for the seam width that you want while you sew and you would just screw it in and tighten it and then when you fed your fabric into the machine it would guide the seam so it's a seam guide and it was adjustable and that was a very common now the one thing that I'm missing and I've always been missing when I bought one of these uh, 200 and 300 models was what they called the applique foot and the applique foot was uh, how can I describe this it was different than than the zigzag foot see this is kind of open toe here but but you see some uh, protrusions right right in the center of it there well the open toe was just like a, a big open rectangle uh, space 
so you could really see what you were sewing very clear like if you were sewing an applique or satin stitch or embroidery and that's what it was made for and the other thing was where most feet are very smooth on the bottom there was a channel cut through here a wide square well rectangle channel from the front to the back so that if you were sewing ribbon or appliqueing or um, embroidery there was a space for that raised sewing or ribbon to pass under the foot without bunching up and I've got to be honest with you I have never seen the original uh, applique foot in person I've seen ones that were bought later and from different singer models but they kind of stopped doing the applique foot and they switched to the special purpose foot but you can buy a plastic or metal applique foot that's that's fully open here with the cutout on the bottom and they're about ten dollars and you see them on eBay and and Singer Parts Online, Sewing Parts Online, So Classic, you know, places you will, you will see either a plastic or a metal one. So I don't have that. That's what I meant when I said it's not quite a full, complete kit. But what I meant about some extra was whoever had this machine bought a later Singer, uh, it's still Singer brand, but it's a special purpose foot. And I did a video uh, on my channel about sewing this. But you see there's pretty good visibility in the front. But this is the sew applique, small applique, or buttonhole, or satin stitch, or embroidery. And it has a kind of it's got a channel in the back here for the raised stitching to pass through uh, it's it's kind of a curved channel that's raised up from the bottom so it can pass over the very close raised up thread for buttonhole and and monogramming and uh, the standard one has one little raised tab with a little hole in it so if you wanted to put thread heavier thread or cording through there and and sew over that to raise up your stitching even more to make it more noticeable so it had a little pinhole guide for that and you would run the cording back through the channel and then start sewing and zigzag back and forth over that heavier thread or light cording. So whoever had this machine um, I guess lost or did away with the applique foot and instead purchased a newer style uh, special purpose foot. And one thing that gives that away is it's still it's still clamps on from the side but you see that the whole clamp is totally different looking than like the vintage clamp so where that vintage clamp uh, kind of went on sideways over the thumb screw and then you tighten the thumb screw down and it, it wrapped around the presser foot bar this also, the newer style, also wraps around the presser foot bar, but you slide it from the bottom up under the thumb screw and tighten it. So that is not something that was included with the 338, but that whoever had this machine uh, acquired that. Um, Let's see what else came with the original it was a large screwdriver and a small screwdriver. Um, this particular one has a wire styles. 
these actually start out as wires and then they get uh, crimped and shaped into screwdrivers. There's the small one which would be mostly for the for the tension unit, the little tiny set screw and the tension and other small set screws. Then what they called the large screwdriver which was big enough for the things that the average homeowner would want to tighten or loosen. Uh, you could use this to tighten a thumb screw, other attachments, a bobbin hole attachment. You could uh, use it to take off the hand wheel, uh, some of those kind of screws. Singer didn't include anything bigger than this because they wanted you to bring your machine in once a year for a tune-up and you know the guys and gals in the shop there at the Singer stores would would do the heavier kind of stuff but they always included a small and a large screwdriver with the 337, 338, 47, 48 uh, I have seen where these have a plastic handle, just a plastic like barrel handle, and they're blue. They're the same, you know, turquoise as this machine, or with the 347 and 8, they were more of a robin's egg blue. And after that, uh, models, most of them were just a dark brown. But if you look up the part number and look for pictures and stuff, you'll You'll see some are wire, some are uh, the teal or turquoise green, and some are the robin's egg blue, and most of the later ones were brown. The, um, it's not mentioned in the paperwork for the um, accessory package, but um, in the older machines, this was always mentioned. It's just a Singer lint brush. This was made to brush lint off your needle area, bobbin area, the tension guide. And if you were going to put your machine away for a, for a while and not be sewing on it, you would put some of the Singer oil on these and you would go around and brush all the metal parts up behind the nose plate under the top cover and under the bottom cover because you wouldn't want anything to rust and this has a very nice one of course it was dirty and oily but I I clean, cleaned it all up but it is an original from from the mid 60s the ones earlier than the 60s the bristles were slightly heavier and uh, black um, then this is rare to find. I don't find this too often when I pick up one of these machines. But this is called a uh, raising plate. If you saw my videos of like the 404, 403, 500, 503, where there's a there's a lever over here you move and it raises up the needle plate above the feed dog so you can do free motion sewing and monogramming and stuff well they did away with all that mechanism in, in <clears throat> and they just included a steel plate that was especially cut to fit right under the needle plate so whatever needle plate you were going to do you would take your needle plate off the machine you would insert this raising plate and then you would insert the needle plate on top of it and it would raise the needle plate up enough that the feed dogs would not pull your fabric so you could do free motion sewing monogramming um, darning and then when you were finished you would just you know take the needle plate out take the raising plate out put your needle plate back in and go on your way and um, I was happy to see this when I got the machine because it's in very good shape 
and uh, it's kind of rare to find one even when people have most of the accessories it's it's rare in my experience to find this so uh, in later years Singer went to little plastic covers that snapped on over the feed dog um, you know like rectangular covers and they just snapped on over the feed dogs you can see the feed dogs working away under but the, the fabric would go up over the cover and then back down in the back and I, I kind of like this this one and the 401 500 like that because it it raised the whole needle plate so you had a lot more smoother bigger surface to feed your fabric through um, this package included a tube of oil and the oil tube would have looked similar to this but this is not an original Singer product this was sold by service stations uh, RPM brand and it was called handy oil and it was supposed to be like a multi-purpose oil and it was made by standard oil company but this original singer one looks something like this I don't I don't remember it being quite this big but um, this was with the machine when I bought it and I'm sure this is from the 60s and so I'm thinking maybe the person used up their smaller original tube of Singer and just, you know, pick some up at the service station or hardware store. Just some handy oil. <laughs> I, I wouldn't use this, but I just wanted to show it to you as an example of a little oil bottle or oil tube that was included with this Singer model. And probably like every uh, you know Singer sewing machine ever made it came with an accessories box this one is really in beautiful condition um, the, it's Singer company number 28 L Con attention Sid Reese Al Soto I don't know what that is but this uh, accessories package I've been describing was a part number 93727 and you see here it didn't say for model 338 or anything because this accessory package or parts of it were used for a few different models you might take one of the feet out and put in a different one depending on the model like if you had a straight stitch model there was no reason to have a zigzag needle plate and a zigzag presser foot you know but um, let me open it up here and uh, you know it's just a kind of a heavy uh, I don't think they called this cardboard I can't remember but it was more like a cereal box type of cardboard but it had folded up and glued sections of cardboard in here so that you could put all the attachments in there and uh, that was included you, you know with all the parts of the um, of the to, to put in everything that came with the accessory kit and a lot of times these are stained and ripped and very smelly and dirty and, uh, and a lot of them I just toss out but uh, this one actually was so clean it just smelled mm, I'm gonna call it dry and dusty so I I took a computer vacuum that I have and I vacuumed the dust off and then uh, I put it like on a table or a bench <coughs> and I, I put a bowl with about a cup of white vinegar next to it and then I cover that whole thing with a bucket or a big upside down mixing bowl and leave it there for a couple days 
and for some reason that vinegar just like absorbs and I don't know how that works but but one of the singer guys I know told me that it, it absorbs all that bad if you have musty smell and old funky smell and in this case just dry dusty smell it kind of absorbs all that smell and when you first take the box out a couple days later it does kind of smell like vinegar but if you just let it sit out a few hours that vinegar smell goes away and uh, it's really pretty neutral after that I guess I should put my oil tube it's pretty big I, I don't think I'll put it in there but I will put the manual in there it was made to fit perfectly and put the box cover on so that was the uh, attachment set, original attachment set that came with the Singer Model 338. Hope that was interesting, a little, little information and some trivia. Thanks for watching. Um, my needle bar and needle bar connecting stud are due to hit my mailbox really soon. I can't wait. So, I figured I'd just do this little video I was thinking about it. But I hope you come back and watch some more of my videos, um, especially the newer ones here on this 338. Thanks for watching. Take care.